This is what the Free Gorges management team did before the construction of the dam. The 5th of February, Saturday 2022, a warm welcome to the channel. My name is James, this is the James Neil Cooper channel. Are you ready? Let's do it. I'm going to start off today with a email that I got that reads a little bit this. How aware are people below the Free Gorges Dam pending danger that looks down on it on them, for example? And there is in China, because I've seen videos related to it, with some kind of warning system like a siren. Something like that which means basically to them to evacuate their their building get out onto open land and possibly um, a text alert system like you do have like an ems that you do have in america let's say in hawaii or in vancouver there's a text system on your phone that will alert the locals to move and the instructions with it as well the you may remember way back in 2004 the tsunami in thailand india sri lanka indonesia and where the tsunami hit and there was a lot of loss of life if you go to phuket now for example the island in the south of thailand where the tsunami hits there are signs so if it does there is a local warning system and directions in which way to go in China, does this exist? I honestly don't know. I hope so, because people learn from the mistakes or the things that they haven't done in correct preparation. We know, again, there is the alarm system. We don't know if there's a text system. We don't know if there's any signs there. But if it was the Three Gorges and it did sort of break, whatever, the first city would be Yingchang, which we covered before. You have the Gabizo Dam there as well, which would break under the pressure. Then it would be Wuhan. Then it would be all these smaller cities along the Yangtze, eventually hitting Shanghai. Maybe not as bad because it sort of spread out over the Yangtze Plain or the, that area, which is pretty flat after the free gorges so shanghai will be affected but remember this as we have covered it before 15 percent 15 percent of the world's economy will be sort of lost because that's how much of the made in china stuff is on the yangtze basin a lot of the military bases are there as well a quite a large number of military bases in the yangtze basin past the free gorges dam are there as well i don't know how many numbers there but obviously if something is affected the military is going to be put into action at a moment's notice and military should be sorry i got a really itchy nose the military should be prepared for to move at a moment's notice supposedly because they are the military so my email viewer who likes to remain anonymous there is your answer hopefully to your question okay some of the regular things oh lovely <coughs> oh dear some of the regular things which are happening at kutan the levels at 170.42 that's gone up Free Gorges has gone down by 2 centimetres, 170.42. The inflow going into the dam is 6100, and the outflow is 4780. We were expecting a kind of drop, or because of the Winter Olympic Games in Beijing supplying the green source because supposedly the Olympics in Beijing is 100% green. Obviously, that's near enough impossible to do. Not every single aspect of the Olympics is going to be green. And just go to any video and you can see that they'll be using another resource of power, like a car to transport a athlete from one place to another. 
maybe that car is not an EV. Maybe it is just a regular taxi. So that defeats a purpose. Once again, it's China doing porky pies and lies to it. But the inflow and outflow is still a concern because the outflow seems to be a lot lower than the inflow. Where is the water going? Question mark. Okay, if we look at the weather for today and the coming days for the three gorges, it's nothing very exciting to be honest with you. So I thought I'd leave you with some funky music to get up and weather dance to it. Think of the weather girls and think, it's raining man, oh, hallelujah. So the Three Gorges Dam, quote, a man-made disaster for people who want the bigger, better, largest thing in the world. And a man-made disaster that landslides during the construction, even now, are a serious problem. All this land, all the mud, soil, grit, slit, whatever it is, eventually gets to the dam, clogging it up, do they clean it? Well, they do have filters, but after 10 years of this, and it's the largest man-made reservoir possibly in the world, is going to cause that problems. The next one, obviously, is the environment related to the wildlife. The sturgeon are near enough extinct, the Yangtze sturgeon and they're putting in not 10,000 fish per year, but 50,000 fish per year. And now the panda, for example, has gone off the endangered species list, or is on a yellow level rather than a red level. But the sturgeon have gone from the yellow level to the red level. Salmon, we don't even go there because they just can't go upstream. When it hits the Free Gorges Dam, the only access would possibly be the ship locks, the ship elevator, that's it. So there are going to be a lot of desperate kind of fish around the Free Gorges Dam. Quite often that's why you see when there is a live feed on from the front, you would see possibly one or two fishermen there because it's a good fishing ground for the fish. I wouldn't say they would be the most healthiest fish in the world, so they'd be easily to get caught because they're desperate for food. So, who to blame for the Free Gorges? Well, I think there's two main culprits. One was this guy, the leader of China during the 1920s. I really have forgotten his name. And the other one is evil dictator Mad Mao, Mao Zedong, who went swimming in the Yangtze in Wuhan. Well, floated, I think, would be more the word than swimming and said, let's build it. And they only had the money to build it during, you could say from the start of the 1990s due to economic, um, economic reform, basically, or the opening up of China. So what is life, or what was life like before the Free Gorges Dam, and what is life like now? Well, before, I think a lot of people were happy. The farmers were there, they had their land, they had the fertile soil, they had the transport system to get somewhere. But when the Free Gorges Dam was complete, completed, relocation of all these people I, and who didn't get new houses, basically what a lot of them had to do was pick up their house and move it higher and then once again, move it even higher. And the where did the money go for the location? The people who got the nice apartments and houses we covered before were the 
people who work for the bank, the management of the Free Gorges, the tobacco company in China, all got these lovely properties with the Free Gorges. And the poor farmers, once again, the poor get poorer and the rich get richer. And this is the sort of shame. What is it like today? Well, downstream we have Ying Chang and they have the gazebo dam there. And how can I say? Um, we go back to the very beginning. Um, they obviously are aware of this monstrosity, but I would say constantly they would be reminded that everything is fine and everything is safe until a flood come when suddenly the um, during the flood, everyone would disappear the management, the government would disappear and then the rescue workers would come out, etc, etc, to do that. And so I could imagine if people could, they would like to move away from Yingchang. You do have a better chance of survival in Wuhan, downstream of the dam. When I was in Wuhan, there was only 3 million people there. The Free Gorges Dam wasn't there. There were floods, yet yeah, during the summer, but nothing serious. Yeah, I maybe like that much of water which drained away in within a couple of hours but because of the free gorges it hasn't reduced floods it's increased floods and that's the whole thing there so upstream is quieter but then all the way up to Chongqing which is a metropolis of the area of 35 million people it's massive all there but you don't see anything related to the free gorges and here are just some images i picked up of past present and future of the actual dam or the dam area etc etc and that is it for today on saturday the 5th of february 2022 i am getting better at the year as always many thanks for the people who do watch this do check out some of my new videos i do have another one coming up of um winnie in china with going shopping into the supermarket with her mum. this is just a a thing that would trying to do to see um just do a different point of view in china basically if you do watch a video about china it's the westerner who's there and i thought wouldn't it be great if there'd be someone who's chinese who speaks english who is happy to do this for you and just to show what china is like just through her eyes nothing political nothing sensitive just normal daily life for an average you could say middle income family in China that's something that um, another video is coming out with that so do keep an eye out on the channel because every day near enough a video comes out one way or the other my name is James thank you so much for your time god bless be well be safe bye bye thank you